Good morning everyone, um, I hope you're all safe and well and dry at home. Today is our last uh, online lesson and I've really enjoyed having the interaction with a lot, uh, a much broader group of you um, over the last few weeks. This is uh, not the last part of um, MAF2 um, graphing techniques. There is one more lesson on that that we're gonna to do tomorrow, but you're gonna do that in class with your teachers and it's kind of a summation of everything that you've learned over the last uh, couple of weeks in this topic. But the last bit of new skill that you need, or new um, sort of concept, is about um, solving inequalities with graphs. And so as an introduction into this, what we're gonna do is think about, well, solving equations, because we're pretty good at those, right? And we're going to highlight the issues that come up when you try and extend these techniques into solving inequalities. So let's start over here on the left-hand side with this guy. Very simple equation x squared equals 4. Now I'm hoping it's so simple and that you guys are so far into learning mathematics in your life that you look at this equation and you involuntarily think of the answer. Like your brain can't avoid coming up with the answer to this. When you say x equals on the next line, what we want to do is take square roots of both sides. Square root of 4 of course is 2, but um, hopefully you've also internalized that when you're doing something like this, there's not just one solution, this is a quadratic, so you would expect there would be two solutions, a plus and a minus. And sure enough, if you squared either of those numbers, positive 2, negative 2, you'd get 4, so they both satisfy the original equation. Okay, so we know how to solve equations, no big deal, but I want to highlight for you that even though in many ways they're similar, um, inequalities like this are different in some really crucial ways, which make the graphing techniques that we've been looking at recently very, very relevant and useful. Let's just imagine for a second, please don't write this down because I'm about to write down something wrong, this time I'm doing it on purpose. Imagine if we were to try and treat this inequality the way we treated the equation up above. If I were to say, okay, well, um, I've got an x squared, but I just want x, so I'll do the same thing. I'll take square roots of both sides. That leaves me with x on the left-hand side. Uh, there's, a, there's a greater than symbol instead of an equal sign. And then I say I get plus or minus two on the right-hand side. Now, this is, this is weird because um, it's not just weird, it's also wrong. Uh, it's weird firstly because we know that this guy up here is shorthand. It's short for x equals positive two and also x equals negative two. It's shorthand for both of those at the same time. But when you have a look at this guy I've written in red, which is wrong, um, if you imagine splitting it off in the same way, it would be kind of puzzling. You would say, well, x is greater than negative two, and then x is also greater than two. Now, that's, that's kind of weird, right? Like if I were to draw this on a number line, for example, if I drew, and I invite you to have a think about what this would look like for you, if I put some uh, markings here, that'll do me. Um, and I said, okay, let's plop zero there in the middle of the number line. Uh, here's two, here's negative two. What would I, or how would I represent um, these two inequalities on the number line? Well, x is greater than two will be this guy over here on the right hand side from two onwards. And then when I look at the other one, x is greater than negative two, um, I draw another hollow circle and then I sort of just keep going, right? And it sort of includes the other one. Now, not only is this confusing, it's just plain wrong. If you take some values that are actually in this uh, part of the region that I've drawn, well, let's take a value like here, one, right? It, when I put in x equals one, does that solve this inequality up here? And the answer is, it definitely does not. You substitute in x equals one, you're like one squared, that's not greater than four, okay? Something's clearly mucked up here. So this is no good. This uh, is not satisfactory. We can't just treat an inequality the way we treat an equation. Um, there are some parallels, like we can add and subtract the same thing to both sides, we can multiply by a, um, a positive number on both sides and everything will be fine. But when it comes to solving things like this, we have to try a different technique. And that's where the heading, this idea comes into mind. We're gonna use graphs to help us. This time, please do pick up your pens and um, write and draw along with me. I want us to um, take this inequality this x squared is greater than 4, and I want us to visualize it with the help of all the graphing techniques we've developed over the last couple of weeks. This is what x squared looks like. We know that, right? y equals x squared gives us this parabola shape. Now, when we see this inequality over here, what this is asking is, when you look at this graph, x squared, can you tell me when is this graph above 4? 
uh, I should say, when, it is, when is it above y equals 4, okay? Um, y equals 4 is a horizontal line. I'm just going to draw it in now. Let's say it's somewhere around there. Here's y equals 4. And you can clearly see that there are two parts of this graph, two parts of the parabola, that are above my green line, right? And those are the parts that I'm interested in. Um, you can see there's uh, this section up here. I'm going to make this a bit thicker. And then you've also got this section over here. Both of these sections of the graph satisfy um, this, this quality that I'm looking for. When is x squared, when is the parabola above this line 4? And now what I want to do though is I want to say what are the x values that make sense of that? Like when you had a look at me solving this equation over here, um, I got x values that were the solution. What are the x values that make sense of this? Well, what I do is I look at the portions of the graph that are um, satisfying this quality. Um, it's, it's this part over here on the left and this part over here on the right. And I look for the domain of the function that gives me those parts of the graph, okay? Let me say that one more time. I'm looking for the domain of the function that gives me the parts of the graph that I want. So for example, if you have a look downward here, um, if I go from this spot over here and to the left, you can see that all the parts of the parabola that are to the left of uh, this little coordinate here, all the parts to the left will be up above y equals 4. So I want those sections, right? All I need to know is, well, what is this spot? Um, where is this point of collision? Now, based on uh, what we did with this earlier question over here, you can see that's going to be x equals negative 2. That's going to be the value that comes down here. So, so long as I am to the left of negative 2, I guess we would say x is less than negative 2, that part will be above y equals 4, and it's the part that I want. Then, of course, if you look over to the right, there's this other section over here that comes from this spot going in the positive direction. So, so long as I'm to the right of that, if I'm in that domain, again, that section of the parabola, which you can see up above here, it's above y equals 4, and that's the part that I'm interested in. So, again, I need to know what this value is. It's 2, based on that question I solved before, and I want the part to the right of it. So, it would be x is greater than than 2. Now what I've written in here, let me just highlight this in another color for you, what I've written in here is my actual answer. It's x is less than negative 2 or x is greater than positive 2. So you can see it's, it's kind of related to what I did over here which was incorrect, but the inequalities are facing in different directions and I can tell that because I'm looking at a graph. The graph, rather than algebra, is going to be our key instrument for solving questions like this, for solving inequalities. Now, just before I pause and see if Mrs. Lee has anything to add, I want you to notice that this is not the only way we can think about this. Um, x squared is greater than 4. I could take this original question, let's go down here, and um, I could rearrange it slightly. I could say, well, what about if I subtract 4 from both sides? I would get this. Right? Now the reason why I'm highlighting to, to do this is because what I'm now looking at is a, a single function over here on the left and what I want to know is when is that greater than zero? In other words, when is this function on the left, when is it positive? Now the reason I like that is because it's really easy to spot where functions are positive and where they're negative. We've got a, a place on our Cartesian plane that sort of divides the positive from the negative and that is the x-axis. If you have a look at this guy over here, you can see this is the same graph. It's been uh, translated downwards, four units. And what I'm now looking for is, where's the part that's above the x-axis? I don't have to draw some other line here in green. I just look at the axis, which I had to draw anyway, and I say, well, where is the part that is above the axis? Uh, you can see it's this same part over here on the left, and this same part here over on the right. And if you go ahead and you solve this, you're going to get this same intercept over here, negative 2, and it's the section to the left of that. And then you're going to get the intercept on the right, which is positive 2, and you're going to go in the positive direction. So you can see you get the same answer. But I like thinking about it this way because I'm really good at finding where things cross the axis. These are intercepts. We've been finding these for years and years and years. So mathematicians being famously lazy, if we've got a skill we've well developed, um, I want to hijack that and use it to solve these new questions. Okay? Okay, now as promised, let me show you um, my summary of this kind of in um, theory form, right? If you want to solve 
for some function being greater than zero. And you can see right here, that's what I did. I rearranged my question. Instead of saying, when is x squared greater than four? Um, I said, well, an equivalent question is, when is x squared minus four greater than zero? If you ever get a question with inequality in it, do your best to rephrase it, if possible, so that the right-hand side is zero. Because then what you can do is solve this question by finding the x values where this function is above the x-axis. Because above the x-axis means that you have positive values. And that's, that's what you're searching for. When is the function positive? Um, you can see by contrast, you will just as often have the inequality sign going in the other direction. You will need to know, well, when is your function less than zero? Um, and the great thing about this technique is it's very easy to adapt. If you want to solve when the function is less than zero, then again, you're looking for the x values where your function is not above the x-axis, but this time below the x-axis. Um, every time you're below, you're getting negative values for y. So this is kind of my summary, right? When you get presented with an inequality and you have to solve it, even when they don't tell you to graph, I would say, number one, make one of the sides zero, usually the right-hand side, and then graph whatever you have on the left and look for where it is above or below the axis.